This is a HeadGum Podcast. And on today's program, the eighth season of We Hate Movies kicks into high gear with a really trashy TV movie. It's it! And for the eighth season in a row, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cabin. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. Movies, thank you for tuning in. I thought we were going to change the name to We Ate Movies. No, no, that's maybe season nine's We Ate Movies. But I, I don't think we're going to stop you from eating those VHS every night. Oh, yeah. No, you yeah. do what you want. Yeah, you I mean, you yeah. live your life you know, like you want. I just cut out the middleman like Videodrome and shove it right into my chest vagina. There you go. Uh, today's episode, uh, like I mentioned up top, is uh, one from my childhood that I've seen a lot of times, and it sucks. It's <laughs> It from 1990, directed... By Tommy Lee Wallace, director of such great movies as Halloween 3 and the original Fright Night. That means a sizable portion of your life has been taken up by re-watching this. This movie is three three hours and yeah. seven minutes. Yeah, I've, I've seen this movie like maybe like five or six times pre-watching it for this show. And also, like I watched it last night in preparation for today. I also re-watched it like two months ago on a whim. And then somebody was like, hey, let's do it. And I was like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> that's almost an entire day of your life that's been wasted <laughs> watching this movie several times. You know what, Chris Cabot? I've <laughs> wasted it in worse ways than this. It's a lot of Harry Anderson, man. <sighs> He's... He's one of the worst parts of this movie. I don't know that he's the worst part, but he is a he is a, a, a obnoxious fixture in this film. And it's not Night Court. Harry no, Anderson. I love it's, Night it's Court. Dave's World. <laughs> Harry Anderson. It, it's, it's the worst. It's the worst. Has any was anybody watching this for the first time for this oh, show? I think it was. I think me. I think I only saw clips. Oh, me really? Too, actually, yeah. yeah. I've only what? seen really? like portions of it. Like on oh. TV. Like I never really sat around for it because it was boring as mm. shit. No, I but, saw it a couple of years ago. Uh, somebody had a sick VHS copy, and I was like, "Oh, that's three hours." What was wrong? <laughs> what was wrong with it? Did you take it to the doctor? Oh, man, that's a f- <laughs> that's a joke that Harry Anderson's character in this movie would tell. <laughs> oh, the world's most famous comedian. This guy sucks. It's- <laughs> <laughs> but you know, while we're saying it sucks and everything about it, it sucks, but there's a lot of people that like this movie. So sure, we're get that out of the way. So let's just fucking relax. How about it, that? It's okay uh, to like it. Yeah, there's so there's gonna be a lot of confusing statements yeah. with it in it. I will say there is a truly excellent part of this movie, and it is the legendary Tim Curry yes, as Pennywise the clown. You know, the, Pennywise the clown ain't nothing to fuck with in this movie. I mean, this thing would be relegated to hell if not for Tim Curry. Like, the only totally reason anyone could anyone remember this or care about this is Tim Curry's great performance and inside John, of a shit well, burrito. Also, John Ritter's beard. Oh my god. It looks awesome. John Ritter with that beard, by the way, kind of looks like the dude who played Al Borland. You know Richard what, Karn. Yes. You know what he looks like in th- this beard? Uh which is IMDB trivia will tell you this. The woman that plays his girlfriend in the first scene where you meet him oh, yeah. thought he was Bo Bridges. <laughs> so she's like, make it out with this dude. She's like, Yeah, I made out with Bo Bridges today. Oh, wait, wait a second. <laughs> Post filming their scenes, she was like, "I've made out with Bo Bridges." I mean, that's my interpretation of it. Just that she thought he, she thought he was J- Bo Bridges. You know, either way, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. do you think Ritter like way. didn't think anything of it because he was just like, "Oh yeah," like she kept calling me Bo. I guess I'm her Bo or whatever. <laughs> She that's said, oh, she really loved me in The weird. Wizard. And I was like, that's not, that's a weird <laughs> way to refer to Three's Company. <laughs> I'll tell you what I really want is I want, I want that framed uh, Time magazine cover he's got. Oh, because oh, like, he's a the architect. famous architect. A famous architect. <laughs> that, you know what? That's a more believable Time magazine cover than our fucking stupid president's fake one, that fat fuck. It's, it's, it's just John Ritter's face and it says, the new architects. 
when has Time Magazine cared about architects? When has anyone outside well, of Architecture in Digest cared? The 1990, world was on fire for architects. <laughs> oh, really? Right, like Seinfeld. They were uh, the yeah. Art Vandalay shit. And but then, that suggests... So that's but, one. But the, <laughs> it, the new architects suggest that there, there was like architects. multiple did, covers. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Time did like a multiverse yeah. thing <laughs> where Batman was on one, Superman, John Ritter was on one, George Costanza was on another one. I w- didn't like every part Richard Dreyfus ever play, wasn't he an architect? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a fake movie job. It is. It's quite like honest. a glamorous yeah. fake movie job that, you know, you, you make an, a godly amount of money yes mike brady was an architect really and all yes. you got to do is carry around blueprints and your yeah. office has like neat models in it and then the, the the boss is like hmm, i don't know about that door and you're like oh, i'll fix that door for you boss just erase that door <laughs> well now, that, now the door is not there all it says to me is financially stable <laughs> mm-hmm. or uh, expo- uh, you know expendable income as well well it's a boring job and it's a thing where not a lot of people know like the, the ins and outs yes. so you can just kind of gloss over it like, yeah, I'm an architect. Here's blueprints. Christopher Lloyd is an architect in uh, b- 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 Back to Suburban the Commando. Suburban Commando. Oh, no, no, he's <laughs> clearly a scientist. Dude, there's <laughs> lists online of movie architects. I just Googled this. Oh, my God. Keanu Reeves in the lake. Lake uh, House. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Woody Harrelson in Indecent Proposal. Michael Keaton in White Noise, which previous episode. Oh, mm-hmm. right. Um <clears throat> And more. That it? <laughs> Jude there Law are breaking more. and entering. Um, Adam and Sandler and Click. Liam Neeson and Love Actually. Wesley Snipes and Jungle Fever. Luke Wilson and My Super Ex-Girlfriend. Ashton Kutcher. Wait. Student architect and Butterfly Effect. Hold on. <laughs> the entire cast of White Men Can't Jump played <laughs> architects <laughs> in various films. Is that what you're telling me? I think that's yeah. correct. Rosie Perez is an architect, too? <laughs> <laughs> Charles oh, Bronson. Oh, that stupid door shouldn't go there. <laughs> Charles Bronson in Death Wish. Wow, well, yeah, so he's one of that's the most famous of cinema's architects. So, Tom so, Hanks in Sleepless in Seattle. I'll stop. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> Tom Selleck in Three Men and a Baby. You said you'd stop! He's not stopping. I'm watching him do it. He's, you know what he's doing right now? He's looking for one last great one. <laughs> one last sweet, juicy nug. Matthew Are, Broderick and the Cable Guy. All right. That, yeah, there you <laughs> go. There, there, there. There. <laughs> so it's a Stephen King property. This is like a hot book from 1980-something or other. 86, right. I want to say. Maybe. Sounds we're, right. we're in Maine. We're in Derry again. We've, we were returning back to Bangor. Derry. And Derry. Oh, hello there. Derry was like one of his big like universe towns. Like that's that's <laughs> honestly, that's the reason why I've seen this movie a bunch. Yeah. Is because in the 90s, I was obsessed with watching Stephen King adaptations. Not so much reading the books. I honestly, <laughs> I honestly have not read many Stephen King books, but like. If there was a, st- it was like, cause you knew, like, as a young lad, you were like, oh, that's horror. And I was like yeah. a budding horror nerd. And I was like, oh, sweet, there's another one. Oh, they keep making Stephen King movies. And they all, like, so many take place in Derry. And I'm watching it as a kid going, where's the milk? <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Season eight, baby. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Season eight, pun town. I'm gonna need to like get a rim shot up on my phone just to play every once in a while for you. It's <laughs> good ones. <laughs> So, um, well, well, it's interesting because, like, where to begin with a movie that's three hours and seven minutes long? It's a clown that kills people that's also a giant spider. It's kind it, I believe And a were- werewolf, too. And a werewolf yeah. It's sometimes. a shape-shifting thing that's been on Earth for millions of years. None of this you learn in the movie, by no. the way. This is all book knowledge. What landed, we call book knowledge <laughs> landed in a comet in the book or an uh, what? Yeah, I he's think a space. He's, wait, he's, wait. Are you saying he's a killer clown from outer space? Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, tec- technically, technically speaking, speaking, yeah, he's a killer clown from outer space. Space spider. <laughs> he's also a space spider. That's true. What, what, uh, Ziggy Stardust and the spiders yeah. from Mars. This yeah. guy uh, played backup uh, <laughs> oh, on shit. Space Oddity. Nice. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, like we start basically ish. I mean, like we're we're basically going between a group of kids that wind up growing up, and like we we are introduced to each one of them with their interaction of Pennywise, right. who is uh, Tim Curry the clown. The most important one is uh, Jonathan Brandis slash this other guy with a terrible ponytail. Yeah, uh, this other dude whose name I can't remember, but he was John Boy on the Waltons. Oh, okay, and he now is and, and no spoiler. 
spoilers, Kevin, because I know I think you're I, current with it, but yes. we're only in season two. He's excellent on The Americans. He's he's like Noah Emmerich's Sans, FBI boss. Yeah, Sans oh, boss he's man. fucking awesome on that. He is ice cold, he this guy on that great. show. And you know what? No ponytail on The Americans. This ponytail this mm. guy's got. Why have it? It's I don't even... you. Do, you don't even see it for most of the movie. It's what, most, are you, what are you talking about? It's all I could look at through three <laughs> well, hours and seven minutes. when those shots come up, but most of the shots are straight on. And, and every it, time it's straight on, I'm like, I know that ponytail's behind there. I need a thin, tight ponytail. If we're going for it, <laughs> Whoa. I need like a real stylized, you know, like... But like a braided ponytail, though? Yeah. I don't know about braid. Yeah, probably yeah. braided. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> really? That'd be interesting. You know, I gotta say... <laughs> When I was watching this movie, I thought the same. I was like, oh, this ugly ponytail. This is a crime. And then the more I watched it, by the end of three hours, I was like, I kind of like ponytails now. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one. Well, that's just because he's the opinion. hero. He's right. the hero, right? Yes, he is the hero, mm-hmm. I think. The, stu- the, he's the a, stuttering hero. He's a famous novelist gone screenwriter, is I guess the idea. Oh, my God. See, now it's, it's a, kinda, it's, it's it's like a Stephen King, King thing. Yes. Where it's yeah. like, wait, like, wait, what? And his protagonist is a writer with a sexy lady that's always telling him not to do things. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's... Uh, that's not enough movie. cocaine in, the, in this movie, though. Not by a country mile, man. Where is the cocaine well, in this Wait, movie? was cocaine in the book? No, I think that was like Mr. Stephen King was but, a big cocaine guy for a while. Oh. But, but, but ample alcoholism. Yeah, sure. Ample, ample alcoholism. We are filling like milk glasses with straight whiskey <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> and it's not just any one character. They're all doing it. This yeah. guy, Ritter, Harry Anderson, they're well, all they, They've been terrorized it. by a clown, man. Like, give cut them a break. So it it so like Steve said, it goes between 1960 and 1990, uh-huh. uh, and so the 1960 shit, which is the stuff that I think works in this movie. The kids, it's Jonathan Brandis, Seth Green, and then like a bunch of other kids that uh, aren't the anybody. The girl is Emily Perkins, who's from Ginger Snaps. Oh right, the Ginger oh, Snaps yeah. franchise. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 that makes sense. Uh, then the fat kid was the buddy on the Wonder Years for a few episodes, oh, and then he got cut. <laughs> I don't remember. I just Sorry, remember him. Kid. We, 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 uh, he got killed in Nam. I don't know. <laughs> no, that was Winnie's brother, and that's a fucking heartbreaking episode. <laughs> We're going to send all these fat kids to Nam. <laughs> they come to Butterball Brigade. <laughs> just drop them out of a plane. <laughs> no, but I don't know if that kid was on Wonder Years from the jump, but oh, he, yeah. was, he was. I remember him yes, from being on. on episodes of Wonder Years. Uh, yeah, and, and then a bunch of other squeaky boys kids. One kid's from the Sandlot, I believe. The kid who plays Eddie is, I believe, in the Oh, is he in the Sandlot? I think so. Is he, Oh, is he the kid that kisses the lifeguard? No. No, he's just no. another one of the kids. Gavin's like, I don't <laughs> think so. No, he plays the sand. <laughs> He was the dog. Actually. Oh, no, it was James Earl Jones. I apologize. <laughs> Man, wouldn't that be awesome? If just big James Earl Jones is like running around with these kids. And so like. These- Hello, Eddie. <laughs> big Eddie. <laughs> uh, they're all like outcasts in one way or another. It's mm-hmm. very like stand by me. I mean, it's Stephen King. We're yeah. all just ha- yeah. we're all just fucking around at a rock quarry, aren't we? We're just having a good old time. <laughs> That's what you did back then, man. That was the fashion at the time. You just hung out in rock quarries. You built dams that. Probably fucked up your town's water supply. And somebody some get these kids a ball, and I mean, like <laughs> we start with it's 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 Bill. He's sick in his bed. He's played by Jonathan Brandis. His little brother Georgie comes in. He's like, you know, Bill, Bill, build me a fucking boat because literally, I don't know. We live in the Great Depression. I don't have a ball. I don't have a comic book. Well, that's the thing that I was confused about. It's 1960. And this kid wants to play with a newspaper boat. <laughs> I mean, like what? I don't know. Come on, get an action figure. Get a GI Joe. Get hey. some jacks. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, Georgie, where's my fucking hula hoop with a stick? And I'm going to roll it down the well, sidewalk. Hilariously, this is set in the same year that hula hoops were invented. So he oh, could have. Sure. Wait, how do you oh, know that? I looked it up. Because this is a shared cinematic universe with the Hudsucker Proxy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> comes in and he just starts selling. He just sells yeah. to everybody. So that's a good place to start. So yeah. Georgie goes out and he's playing with this little boat and it's raining heavily and it goes into the drain and he gets murdered by Pennywise. Well, it's Pennywise is like, he just, it's Tim Curry and he's creepy as fuck because he's just like all, you know, he's a clown mm-hmm. and he's just like, you know, the kid goes, to the, you know, he's like hitting on this kid kind of, you know, <laughs> you're about to eat a kid, he hits on him is, a bit. Is this the famous sewer scene? Yeah, he's peeking out of the, he's, mm, he's, yeah. he's trying to get that up skirt of this kid. <laughs> well, what I love is like... Did it hurt? 
Oh, when this you kid's... fell from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> this kid's dressed like the fucking Gordon's fisherman, by the way. <laughs> well, it's raining in Maine, man. You better buckle up. <laughs> But he's so he's like he's like talking this kid up. He's like, "Yo, man, what do you? I got some uh, the, you, the good stereos are there are, ba- are in the back of the fucking sewer." You know what we have down in this sewer, don't you? Balls. <laughs> we got balls. We got comic books. <laughs> Two we, of them. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we got these things called video games. You don't. E- you haven't even heard of them yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a fucking book, kid. Look into it. <laughs> He's, Pictures of animals too. So the boat falls down there, and he has the boat, right? And that's how he's really luring. He's the luring shot. him, yeah. and he's and the kids like you know. My dad said never to talk to strangers, but I mean, I think the dad just like top lined it. He's like never talk to strangers unless they that's introduce it. themselves. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you know, don't talk to clowns in the sewer. Well, that's, period. That's the thing. Even if the the person introduces themselves to you, if they are in a sewer, <laughs> dressed as a clown, dr- especially dressed as a clown, yeah. Because he's like, well, all right, how about this? My name is Pennywise the Clown, and your name is Georgie. Now we know each other. Let's get naked. <laughs> yes. God. Like, well, he just rips his arm off. He I rips guess. his arm off, and the kid bleeds to death in the street. But you don't see it because it's ABC. What and a that- stupid, what a stupid <laughs> fucking thing. Made for TV movies with Stephen King content. I'm looking at you, the Langoliers. What a waste. It's all silly. It's all boring. And I mean, like, why make this a drama when it's a horror thing? Like, yeah. Everything should be horror. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, they skip over, like, in that first scene where, like, they find the new, uh, it, it's the present day timeline yeah. mm-hmm. and they find the kid in the thing and they're like, hey, yeah, we got her. What's left of her? I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and Show you wonder, me it. And you have to wonder, like, that's different from like a bunch of kids went missing. I, yes, I, a bunch of kids were found like they were the Kittner boy, like got fucking <laughs> chewed up by Jaws. Just, That's I, the thing, though, right? It's like go. You're right. Going missing is different than what if you read on Wikipedia or if you've read the book, like what this beast is doing to these children. Completely different story. Just give me like a body under a tarp or something or like yes. a rookie puking his guts yeah, out of the we corner. We need somebody That's... throwing up, yeah. holding the side of the ambulance. Just show me a pinky, like that, a pale pinky. I'm like, oh, fuck, that kid's dead. Exactly. Like, Any kind of stakes. What uh, Do we know what network this aired on? ABC. Oh, that's even fucking worse. Fucking Disney yeah. owned shit. That's, well, I mean, I don't think it was Disney. The that's time. the pale pink. Hasn't it always been? Lineup. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, all right. Right. What, what'd you say, Eric? Nah, nothing. I was just talking about the pale pinky. <laughs> And how how weird sounds it like is. a sounds like a sex move. <laughs> Gave her the pale pinky last night. Yeah. And tonight I'm gonna give him the pale pinky. Everyone gets the pale pinky. <laughs> it's so. Uh, he's very distraught uh, by his brother's death and blah blah blah. And like that, he, this is the most like important thing that happens in the teenage years. We meet everybody. Bill is a Stephen King stand-in. John Ritter is the world's most famous architect. Uh-huh. Right. Harry his name Anderson. Is Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright Jr. And that little fat kid grew up to be Frank Lloyd Wright Jr. <laughs> Well, his dad died in Korea, and like at one point, like Pennywise turns into his dad, and he's like, "Hey, Georgie, I'm in hell." <laughs> it's kind of funny. He's like he's Benny, like, I think it's it. He's like, "Oh, hey, uh, this this is where I live now. This water filtration plant, <laughs> and it's a, it's like a, it's like some beefcake and like an airman's uniform. Beefcake. But yeah. then there's like little clown dots on mm-hmm. his clothes, and then uh, it's like this dude's like holding a balloon. Like there is some creepy imagery in this movie, but sure. they just don't take it far enough well here's my question so he, he gets georgie and like georgie is like oh he's like hey, you want a balloon georgie and then like uh georgie is like oh will it float down there he's like oh you'll float it'll float down here george oh, but then he goes fucking float but but he gets it in his brain for the next 30 years all he's talking about is floating and i don't like like it's, it's like getting into an argument with somebody and like oh can you take out the garbage oh, i'll take the garbage out all right and then like you're doing that for the rest of your life yeah it's weird it's kind of like uh anytime someone asks you a question and then you just constantly say your fake news your <laughs> fake news <Yeah. laughs> your fake news endlessly mm-hmm. endlessly it's like a- like as if you had some degenerative brain disease <laughs> yeah i am a sewer clown so what <laughs> 
Yeah, I definitely think we need to get Pennywise in a hospice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we, so then we also have uh, Beverly Bev, who grows up to be Annette O'Toole, who's a famous fashion designer. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is uh, her her brand is Beverly by Hand, by the way. <laughs> no, I didn't I notice that. that. <laughs> They're like answering the phone, like, uh, Beverly by Hand. Uh, hello, this is Beverly <laughs> by Hand. <laughs> but it's like, um, isn't she more well known for being abused by her demonic freaking boyfriend? I don't get this what is this is the doing. most Wait, insane what is, what is scene this? that they allow in this movie. Bev is about to close a deal with some company and like she she closes it with her boyfriend who's her partner and or her business partner as well and then like they're sleeping and everyone keeps getting calls from Mike Mike Hanlon uh, who is the dad on Sister Sister and other stuff? He was a dad on Sister Sister. He was uh, uh, Venus Flytrap on WKRP in Cincinnati. That's Great more, fucking sitcom. That's more like it. And uh, yeah. he, Chris, you want to take it? He goes to the, uh, the the fridge to get another bottle of champagne. Yeah, he's going, he's going doubles. Uh, he comes. Hey, honey, back- you want Sunny D purple <laughs> stuff or champagne? <laughs> <laughs> They just sealed some deal with these Japanese businessmen is the idea. Sure. And he like, you saw the seedlings of this in the scene where he's like, you know, do your hair this way and don't you touch it. Yeah. He doesn't allow her to take a phone call. So she's packing up her bags trying to get home because there's a monster killing children in her hometown. Sure. Uh, And uh, he's like, no, you're not. And like they start getting into it and he just gives her. An open fucking he just hits her. It's five across the eyes, man. It it's is fucking just like, crazy. Come on, what no. are we doing in this movie? And we've already seen her get abused as a kid, or maybe we will. And <laughs> soon it's enough, it's within fifteen minutes. Like of the, this. On the two scenes that we see of this woman, <laughs> yeah. she's getting abused by somebody. It's like, well, well and I guess that's I mean, the that's thing. The I mean, she says something about like you know, oh, I found someone who's exactly like my father. Who that dude is like a fifty-year-old Harry Dean Anderson-looking mm-hmm. guy. Pretty great. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so this dude Mike is Mike Hansen. He's the guy. He's the town librarian. He's the one in the group who stayed behind. And I guess so. The whole thing is they made a pact. Like, hey man, we defeated this demonic clown once. If he ever rears his ugly head again, I'm gonna call all you motherfuckers, and you got to promise to come back here. We're gonna fight this dude again. Is the idea? So he's a lot of this movie is this dude just making phone calls. A lot of this movie should be him like going through random white pages. Yes. Like, well, let me call every one of them in New York City and see maybe they moved there or maybe they moved here. I don't know how he finds. Yeah, everyone. he does have current numbers for everybody, yeah. which is but he convenient. gets like a, people at like differently. Like, yeah, he's got current numbers. He gets uh, Harry Harry Anderson right. at like the the Jay Leno or, or, or at the Carson show or something. Yeah, backstage like, he gets a phone call. So I guess he was watching like uh, Carson and just saw him on there. It was like, the car, oh, I better God. call the Carson show. Well, he's a librarian, man. He's a resourceful guy. He knows how to look up phone numbers. All that maybe. microfiche, you get all those phone numbers. Oh, shit, that's true. <laughs> Uh, but he's yeah. a loser, apparently. Like everyone else moves off and like becomes incredibly famous, and he even says like he's like, "Well, you all became un- uh, was unusually it? successful." <laughs> unusually <laughs> successful is but a great it's, term. It's a weird like, <sighs> yeah. They talk about this at the end of the movie, but it's some weird. They're making it sound in the movie like it's some supernatural thing, like yes. because these kids got out of the town. And they're part of this group, this close knit group of p- friends or whatever. Yeah, they're they're all like unnaturally successful at what they've done. So all he needs to do is go up the road and then like open up like I don't know like any open up a car dealership and he's the best car salesman in the world. Like is that the idea? I so guess wait, so. But he's the best librarian in the world now. I guess that's how he finds the numbers. No, but he's not though because he never left Derry. He's still fucking damned because yeah. he lives in oh, these shit, town lines. Right. Dude. So he can't even shelve books, right? Is that? <laughs> No, he's, he's <laughs> fucking up constantly. He's <laughs> spilling coffee on the periodicals. Dewey Des- Decimal what? <laughs> it's really bad. It's embarrassing. He's been on probation like six different times <laughs> at work. And they're like, they don't fire him. But they're like, all right, I guess, Mike, you're back on probation we're, again. We're going to try assistant librarian <laughs> for a little while oh, just man. to see how it is. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. librarian demotion. <laughs> that stinks. Yeah, I'd like to uh, check this book out. Yeah, just take it, man. Just take, just take it. Just Mike, what did we say about the books? <laughs> you There's a system. Scan that card. Uh, yeah, so Seth Green is Harry Anderson, a young version. Yes. Um, um, yeah, so Harry Anderson, budding comedian, whatever. 
Uh, I'm well, butting terrible. This is like sub Dunham. This is less awful. than I'd w- rather watch Jeff Dunham it's, be racist with puppets. <laughs> it's like a cat skills comedian thing. It's some of yeah. the hackiest which shit, which is great. And it, then it, is it? Yeah. So they get <laughs> the a phone Godzilla call. Godzilla joke. He's he, taking. He, his manager is like, like, well, you were supposed to guest host the Tonight Show, uh-huh. and you're going away. He's like, yeah, let Leno do it. So and this is 1990. So. It, or Pennywise, is responsible for the reign of Leno on The Tonight Show. Oh, that fucking evil clown. I knew he was a menace, and man. And I think <laughs> these kids were all a ruse just to <laughs> install Leno I mean, into that chair for like, for like if, what? If How he, many years was he on that show, Chris? I, I forget. 25? Something Some that sounds right. Like 93-ish yeah. to 2010? 2010. Yeah, yeah, because like he that. came back I mean, from the dead one last scare. If... <laughs> If his real end was to make as much misery as possible in the world, misery, is, Stephen King book, yeah, that yeah, is definitely bigger than killing like what, what, five hundred kids? Yeah, oh yeah, like I would definitely trade over kids. centuries, though, but centuries. in one town. Yeah. Mm. Wait. So was he killing like Native American kids or, or what? I think that's the idea because they. Well, in the book, at least, it's like he says he's been a, an entity on this planet for millions Whoa. of years, and then the the dude Mike we see in this TV movie is tracing back like the history of the town, and he discovers that like <laughs> every Wait a second every, did, he, did he kill the dinosaurs? <laughs> At least in Derry, Maine. He killed all Derry, Maine's dinosaurs. The young dinosaurs in Derry, Maine. Oh, no. Look out, Mother Velociraptor. <laughs> Kill a clown. He's going to take us out. I want to rewind this to four minutes ago, but like, all right, Jay. I tried <laughs> twice. Yeah, you had the t- Tonight Show. You lost it twice. You got a last chance. I'm going to kill five more kids and you'll get Jay's garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm out, man. I got other things to do. I'm an enormous spider. Pro tip. Denim. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, okay. I'm done. <laughs> I can't do loud. <laughs> That was actually pretty accurate. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Look, if, if the kids gotta die, they gotta die. <laughs> Look, let's be straight and make one thing perfectly clear. The only reason I'm coming back right now is I really fucking hate Conan O'Brien. <laughs> I want to fuck that ginger up good. Don't think this is a favor to you, Leno. <laughs> Thank you, my lord, my dark lord. Oh, <laughs> my dark lord. It. <laughs> Yeah, we got a great show today. We got a, you know, we got we, we got a Hugh Grant and a little special thanks to the uh, murderous clown in Derry, Maine. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, Jay, you're so off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a question for you. Uh, who is the first president of the United States? Uh, who is the clown that's killing everybody in Derry, Maine? <laughs> uh, and then so there's like uh, a little nerd, Eddie. Mm-hmm. Who grows up to be a dude who looks like Matthew Modine but is not? <laughs> yes, and and like the the whole game is is Eddie gay? Question mark. Um, I, I, I think wait, he's just I, a mama's boy. I, oh, I guess. Were so. you playing? I wasn't playing that game. But it's it's a weird thing, like because they they keep saying he's a, like he's a virgin or something. Well, no, there's a comment when uh, spoiler alert when the next one the coward Stan yeah. when his headless. Entity yeah. is talking to them and talking about like what they're what they're repressing yeah. with their fears. He Ooh. says, or who you sleep with. Oh. Yeah, and he's like, oh, oh. Yeah, and he's like, Eddie, what's your sex life like? Do you have a sex life? Question mark. Like that kind of a thing. And he, oh, that's yeah, weird. Yeah, I, don't know. I like this dude who looks like Matthew Modine, though. I don't know what else I may or may not have seen him in. He's I a better think, part of this movie for sure. I think he might be the guy who this is freaking really out there. Uh in Super Bad, the guy who gets into a fight with Kevin Corrigan in the in the second big party. I've got no fucking you, but I, I just saw Super Bad again, so I, I, I can just I tell you this? I've I've seen Super Bad a total of one time in my life. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It was. It's ten years old now. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I think it's still really good. That's bone chilling news. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, Jonah Hill later because six <laughs> kids were killed in Derry this week. I got another week on my contract. <laughs> Thank you, Dark Lord. Thank you very much. I just bought another. I just bought another car. It's so great. <laughs> Thank you so much. When will it be enough, Jay? When will it be enough cars? Even I, Pennywise the Clown, am getting tired of killing kids for you. 
<laughs> is it like, is he like liquefying them for gas or something? <laughs> I got a Studebaker for you, but the thing is it only runs on kids. <laughs> And so this nerd, Eddie, has grown up to have, like, a successful fleet of limousines yeah. as his business. Sure. There's a great line here. So he gets the call, like, you got to come back. The clown's fucking up the town again. And he's running out of his mansion, and he's, like, living with his mother. And this woman's, like, crazy overprotective, like, uh, screaming after him and shit. He gets in a car and tells this driver to go. And then he's, like, getting business affairs in order for his time away. And he's, like... I want you to personally take the Pacino job. <laughs> oh, really? I missed that. Yeah, line. dude. He instructs him that he he wants this driver to personally take care of Al Pacino. <laughs> Hoo ha! Where's Eddie? <laughs> Supposed to be picked up by Eddie. Yeah. And you know what? This will lead us into Stan. But honestly, if Al Pacino's coming into town, sorry guys, I gotta miss this weekend. You yeah, know, I know. <laughs> I know. I said that I'd come back at a drop of a hat. But it's the Al Pacino weekend. Totally. Eddie, it's back. It's Mert. <laughs> it's eating children. Yeah, but it's Al Pacino. <laughs> I'm going to drive Al Pacino around. Man, a 1990 Al Pacino. What are we talking about, though? Because this is even like pre Godfather 3. It was such a woman 90? Just, just love. For all? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's maybe the that. love Pacino. Oh, yeah. And Justice for All, I think, was earlier. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was Good movie, earlier. though. Good movie, yeah. Um, He should have just, like, Brought Pacino with to Darius. <laughs> Add something fun to this movie. Clown! <laughs> look at that clown! Oh, boy, Eddie, look at that clown. You like that clown because he's got a great ass! And your face is all up in it! <laughs> it's from the film Heat. <laughs> I'll be reading from Heat today. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little script with me. That's a great way that you defeat Pennywise. You just read screenplays at him. I'm going to run some signs with you, Penny. <laughs> oh, no, I'm shrinking. <laughs> William Monahan script to the departed. I'm screaming. <laughs> Uh, and then so so yeah. Then what's the what's the cowardly guy's name? His name Man. is Stan, and he's having like a quiet evening. And he's like he seems to be the least successful, but he's successful enough. He's got a wife. She's like knitting, watching Perfect Strangers. By kind the way. of one of the highlights of this movie. Actual footage yeah. of Perfect Strangers. The scariest part. <laughs> and it's the episode where they got the skis on and they're fucking around with each other in the living room. I got to tell you, man, Hulu is putting Perfect Strangers on in a couple of weeks. Yep. You won't see me for a while. Yep, they're doing that entire TV. GIF lineup. You hear that, folks? We're going back on break. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect Strangers, Urkel, Step by Step. Mm -hmm. It's all there, dude. You can see Urkel be a sexual predator. Oh, man, you won't see me for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing her down. <laughs> Don't worry, everyone. I'll still be here. <laughs> so he 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 gets a call, and like it's like, oh, my, you know, it's Mike Hanlon, and like the idea is every time you and anytime you leave Dara, you forget. The good news is you forget all about Dara. You forget about the clown shit. You forget about all the dead kids, blah, blah, blah. Right. And you become incredibly successful. The drawback is every so often Mike Hanlon calls you and is like, hey, man, you got to come back to town. You get that fucking Hanlon update, dude. <laughs> it's so also not made completely clear that that's how that works. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like if, it's very if they had just called him and said, like, it's back. Yeah. Even if they hadn't, rem if they if they remembered it all, yeah. they would ha act the same way essentially. Well, yeah, the thing they're is, afraid. Yeah. Like, I don't it, know if we're supposed to understand this, and perhaps the book tells you this. It definitely does, probably. Mm -hmm. But like the a thousand pages of this scary clown book. Yeah, I didn't have time for it. <laughs> yeah, but like, is it a thing where we are forgetting it due to traumatic experience? Yes. Or is it magic? I it's think magic. It is magic. In the book, it's magic. Yes. Yeah. It's well, a, yeah, clearly so in the book, a, it's magic. Wait, he's a space wizard now? <laughs> no, it's just the magic of Maine. Oh. Which yeah. I'm going to do their PR and their, uh, <laughs> their touristy board is... Uh, They've been uh, they've been pitching me for a while, and I think I'm going to do it. There you go. But so he gets this call, and he's like, "Oh yeah, 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 Mike." And, and then like Mike is kind of addicted. He's like, "You promised, Stan. Come on, man. You promised me here, bud. I'm Dude, real, if you know, I'm in a real jam with this scary clown pal. <laughs> if you know the weight of this situation as only Mike Hanlon can." You are going to guilt these fuckers to come back to town. Yeah. You can, you know what's at stake. Mm -hmm. And this is what, Richard Mazur? This yeah, is Richard, Richard Mazur, the dad Who's from uh, Encino Man. And License to Drive. He's yep. incredible. He's Love, this, on, guy. Uh, Love he's this guy. Jason Schwartzman's father on Board to Death. 
Oh, oh fuck right, yeah. yeah! Oh, he's I in, totally he's forgot in about the that. thing. I don't know if he's headless in the thing. I don't know if that's like hey, this guy's Richard Mazur's thing. <laughs> no, he just gets shot in the head. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, just head damage in <laughs> some way or another. Yeah, that's my thing. You can fuck up my skull. <laughs> so he uh, he's like about to like bang his wife, right? Uh, dude, it, I was preparing for some fuck watching. <laughs> Wait, how do you prepare for that? <laughs> you just Flip flops you, on. You <laughs> sit up in, <laughs> on your couch or your chair or whatever you have. You straight, you get good posture mm -hmm. and you look right at that TV mm -hmm. and you don't let anything break your gaze. And you man. definitely don't smile. To no, know. it's a very serious, what happened, serious thing. What things. happens if you crack a smile? Because I, I don't know. The I, DVD I, 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 I No one's ever it. done it no, before. Who would do Eric, it? you'll never make it in late night if you smile. <laughs> well, it's so weird because she's like, <laughs> she's like, listen, I just got a call from my mother. And of course, she wants to know when we're gonna make her a grandmother. I'm like, dude, maybe that ship might have sailed. But then, <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. I'm 57. <laughs> These actors, first of all, yeah. Look but, into adoption. But then, <laughs> but then, so he's like, that's funny. It's it's kind of one of the creepiest lines in this movie in a real creep fest movie. He's like, oh. Well, me and your mother were thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> In fact, we talked about how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, you mean right now? So they're ready to fuck Right in front of Balky Bartakamoose and Cousin Larry. <laughs> and it's just like, of course, that's when fucking Mike Hanlon's got a call. Dude, man, let this the machine get it. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. And he gets it and he goes, oh, yeah, Mike, I, rem I remember the promise. Oh, God, are you sure it's back? And he goes upstairs. He's like, I'm going to take a bath. And he kills himself. And he writes it on the wall. Yeah. Dude, just be like, oh, shit, man. I have any excuse <laughs> in the book. Totally. You know what, Mike Hanlon? Come fucking find me. <laughs> that, why do you leave Maine, you lousy fuck? Yeah, he, li <laughs> he lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Like, come on down, motherfuck. <laughs> Drag me across the Mason-Dixon to fight your clown monster. But just, have you never made up an excuse? Like, come on, man. Oh, my... My mother-in-law's in town. My dog's got diarrhea. Like, there's a lot of shit yeah. going on here this weekend, Mike. <laughs> I would this leave dude, with dog diarrhea. <laughs> this dude I have not spoken to in 30 years asked me to come home for some weird supernatural event. Better commit suicide. <laughs> or, you know what? You just go, hey, buddy, you got the wrong number. Exactly. <laughs> Are you, are you are you sure you made a prom? Yeah, yeah, wrong number. Yeah, no, nobody in this house makes promises except to fuck while Perfect Strangers is on. Hey, uh, hon, if anyone calls, that sounds like they may have been on WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I am not home. Johnny Fever, Lonnie Anderson, all of them. I am not home this weekend. How about we moved? How about <laughs> yeah, blanket, blanket, we moved statement for those exactly, people. Exactly, and there's no internet, man. Just like move. Move S to the next house over. Straight to slitting your wrists <laughs> in a <laughs> bathtub. Dude, overreaction of the century. Over a kid promise. And, like, and then writing it on the wall? Yeah. <laughs> You, you know, why even connect yourself to that? Yeah, Why totally. give it the pleasure? Write sad or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like a frowny face <laughs> so that people know why you did it. He and etched I'm a frowny face <laughs> in blood <laughs> on his bathroom it's, tile. It's easy enough to do a balloon, just like mm -hmm. something more than... Or IT. just don't write anything. Just or don't just kill, don't kill yourself. I mean, and like I am the first one to kill myself in a horror movie, mm -hmm. but not in a horror movie where there's a geo-specific demon yes. that I am that cannot leave this town that I am fucking miles and miles away from. Pennywise does not cross the town <laughs> line, man. Just hang up the he phone. He ain't going to Atlanta. No. Oh, honey, who is that? Nobody. Zip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And what are you ultimately, like, really ultimately, what are you doing it for? For the pride of John Ritter? <laughs> like, really? Like, that you you are doing it just because you're scared of saying no to these people. You don't even remember John Ritter, dude. That's yes. the thing. Mm -hmm. Then there's even less reason. Give me Harry Dean Anderson's fucking number. I'll call him. Harry Anderson. Harry Anderson. Not yeah. Richard Dean Anderson. Oh, yeah. oh fuck, <laughs> if MacGyver rolled in, dude. Can you, can you imagine he'd fuck that clown up with some bubble gum and a paper clip? Well, he always has battery acid on him. So. Oh, that's, 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 <laughs> that's one of his right. weaknesses. That's right. 
But yeah, I mean, like, don't kill yourself in this situation. If, no. if you're in a house with Jason and you got no way out, yeah, maybe take the coward's way out. Sure. I'm a big fan of the coward's way out. But this is like the idiot's way out. Yeah. A total boob move. Also, man. I can't for, believe the, it. for the, what, the five or six scenes that they use blood in this, uh-huh. like, why waste it on a death that, like, you didn't have to? Like, but that's it, how it's pretty cool. I know, but that's I, I kind of like it. It's you kind of cool. like it? Well, I, mean, I just like you the it on the wall. It's oh, cool yeah. imagery, but to your point, though, Cabin, like, the thing about it is, if you notice this movie's blood use, it's all just like on wall. It's only on porcelain. <laughs> Sinks, bathroom tile of some kind. And photo albums. They're all porcelain. Yeah, fo- bleeding photo. <laughs> Bleeding Blo- porcelain photo album. The blood Ooh. balloons. My God, the 99 blood <laughs> balloons you get. No. 99 blood balloons <laughs> floating in the dairy sky. Pretty much. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking weird, I'd man. I'd buy that single. <laughs> Ritter's introduction is also kind of great. Uh, mm-hmm. So when he gets the phone call, he's coming back. From winning some sort of architecture award? Dude, this guy is going to nothing but architecture ceremonies day in and day out. I don't understand this world, though. He's got like a babe, a stretch limo, possibly cocaine. Uh, He's an architect. He's an architect. What's weird, though, is in the book, I think he lives in like Nebraska or some shit. Oh, really? Which is, I mean, they don't specify where he is no, here. No, he's, he's in New York City. Oh, is he in New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think in the book, he's somewhere in the Midwest like that. Because at some point, he goes up, like, he's, like, all drunk, and he's looking at the city, like, oh, I architected you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I fucking built this town. It's my building. That's my building. <laughs> That's my building. Yeah, he drunkenly walks up to it un- uh, on top of it. It's like a ba- the baby's day out ending. <laughs> He's Dude, walking up to the end of it, drunk off his ass. That is the scariest part of this movie. So he gets out of this limo with this babe who thought he was Bo Bridges. <laughs> and they're boozing it up. He stumbles into this loft thing. Uh-huh. Massive loft space. I think oh, yeah. the chuds are running around outside. Uh, and you know they're about to get down. He gets the fucking dreaded mic phone call. Uh-huh. And then immediately like pushes this woman aside and goes to a table and just fills up this huge water glass with whiskey. <laughs> yeah. And you know it's like we're getting drunker tonight and this dick will not be working. There's so much interrupted <laughs> fucking in this movie. It's all, it's all that's Mike Hanlon's move, man. And I guess what Mike Hanlon, I'm busy tonight. Maybe I'll get there tomorrow. Mike Hanlon's fucking, everything. Yeah, his part-time job is a cock blocker. <laughs> <laughs> Assistant librarian slash cock blocker. <laughs> and I mean, like, here's the thing. You, you, you answered it, by the way. What if you built a sewer from New York uh-huh. all the way to, be- to Derry? You flood, you flood Pennywise with chuds. Oh, yeah, happens. get the chuds up in there. <laughs> this is a very practical solution <laughs> to, to build a gigantic tunnel system wherein New England shit can mix with New York City shit. Yep. All right. Supernatural beasts fight each other. <laughs> be Ninja, awesome. Ninja Turtles can get into the mix. Jay, you got to come back. The chuds are after me. <laughs> can I ask a serious question? Please. What is going on with John Ritter's phone in this apartment? I don't remember. Do you see it. this thing? <laughs> oh, it's an oh, incredibly long phone wire, right? It's a it's a it's a cord phone because it's 1990, so we're sure. still fucking around with that. But yeah, it's a weird like the phone's on the bed, right? And it's got a long cord to the to the you know uh, receiver and whatnot. Sure. But then also the cord goes like up into the ceiling. (laughs) Yeah. What is, how much cord do you need, Ritter? Is the phone on the ceiling? No, the phone's on the bed. But it just goes up, so it loops up. You're talking about the curly cable goes to the ceiling? It does, yes. Yeah, the curly cable just goes up. That is madness. You're a super successful architect. How about more than one fucking phone in the house? (laughs) Too busy concerned if he if he could rather than if he should. <laughs> yeah, that was the decision he made at Caldors. <laughs> Sir, I don't know if I can make a phone wire that large. <laughs> Do I'll do a phone, huh? What a cheapskate ridder. But the funny thing is, he used to be he used to be the fat kid, and like this whole movie, and like John Ritter is in like you know early '90s John Ritter shape. Which sure, is, isn't not to say great, but not to say bad either. But everyone's like, oh, "You lost so much weight." Like, He's fucking forty. Anything can happen. Like people are fat kids, and they grow and, out of it. And that he, kid was like a big kid. He wasn't like super. He's tough, not. A, so. Yeah, they're at, like they react. 
like this little kid had to be cut out of a house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like they see Ritter and they're like, holy fuck, did they cut off 75% of your body? Like, no, I grew. I'm, you notice I'm six foot three now? Like, what do you think happened? He tells some weird story about how like a gym teacher beat the shit out of him because he lost weight. Yeah. <laughs> what? I miss this. There's a thing. He's like giving a Neto tool as a, like a sensuous massage. And he's telling the story that. about how like the, like some kids were picking on him because he was fat and the gym teacher didn't do anything. And he was like, next spring, I'm trying out for the track team, motherfucker, and you're going to pay for this or whatever. And he talks about like he ran everywhere for like the whole winter oh, and yeah, ate yeah, nothing yeah, but yeah. salad. Yeah. And he's like. And then I beat all these records at the track team tryout. And I said, what do you think about that, coach? And the coach punched him in the face. <laughs> I would, da- too. How dare you lose mm. weight? <laughs> so um, everybody comes back and everyone's very afraid. And now Pennywise. And like, guess what? Now Pennywise is fucking with you. 24 by 7. Yeah. He wasn't before. It was but just, now he is. It was just Mike's problem yesterday. <laughs> exactly. Now today, it's all of your problem. But, and and we uh, by this time, we've been getting all those flags. Flashbacks right. yeah. of Ugh. 1960 and uh, the you know all all their personal encounters and yes and all the stuff. The one thing we should say in the 1960s they they beat him with the the slingshot in the novel, um, which uh, I don't think. Mm. And, and the reason we're doing this, by the way, in case you haven't noticed, is it is coming out as well. Yeah, yeah uh, I think it is already it's, out. Yeah, it was out last yeah. Friday, and so not, none of us have seen it. We're yet. recording this in mid August. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, we don't have to tell. Uh, you don't have to. Tell them everything. (laughs) WHM secrets. (laughs) Planning ahead for episode releases. And I I, I would guarantee that this tidbit from the novel didn't make it into the movie. I know a a colleague of mine has seen the movie and has confirmed it's not in it as well. So they defeat it, and it's great, right? And they're Uh lost. Mm -hmm. All these kids, these prepubescent kids, are like lost in in the, the sewer tunnels. And wouldn't you know it? The only way to get back to get back to civilization is if they all have sex with their female friend. <sighs> clickety clack, clickety clack. So it's, they cl- defeat cl- cl- clickety clack. the ancient evil clown shapeshifter. Yeah, uh-huh. with clickety clack. And then they get shot. lost in a sewer that is in a small main town with a low population. It's got to be like <laughs> what, like a, a mile or less yeah. to the water treatment plant or something. Mm, yeah, maybe, it's not you know, a big maybe town. Two. Yeah, and then. They don't know how to get out, so they decide to have an orgy. Uh huh. Yes. Just to you know, like, I don't know, freshen up their minds or something. I think it's something where it's like, like you, unity. If yeah, it we're like them. united if we've all fucked. But we, my question is, it's like, like, ha- it's like creepy Captain Planet. Let's no, become it's a kind of like sleepers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it is not kind <laughs> of like sleepers, Captain. My God, Wait, they have this shared trauma that they carry around. Yeah, yeah but, but I don't but in the mo- form of Pennywise. But I in guess. The, well, all right, that shared trauma. I was going <laughs> to say the orgy in the book is not. They molested themselves, Chris. <laughs> you know what's? Uh, but you know what? Shame on the publishers too. <laughs> exactly. What you, did he have over these publishers that he was like, you know what? You're not cutting out the kid orgy. You click, can click, blame click, click. cocaine on a lot of things. Yes. I don't think you can blame it on this. This this <laughs> was like <laughs> fucking <laughs> five tablets of acid. But it's and not, then a whole thing of Jim Beam rye. <laughs> Everybody should be sixty nine if that's the case. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it should be. I think uh, what happened was Stephen King went to a, a Lewis Carroll art exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> and then went home and decided to pen a little tribute. I mean, my God, you want unity? How about a fucking big old sewer set daisy chain? Okay, <laughs> come on. Or just a big old group Dude, hug, also, maybe. How about hugging? You, how about where are you fucking in a sewer? What yeah. are you fucking up to your neck and turds? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. God. And what? It, apparently it goes hey, on hey, for kids. pages. Hey, kids, I was just going to eat you, honestly. You know it's over. We're good. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to space. Hey, hey, hey kids, guess what? You won. <laughs> you beat old Pennywise the Clown. It was too disturbing for Pennywise. You gotta do something more fucked up than Pennywise. Was I doing. gotta go throw up. <laughs> the alien spider crab is aiming the slingshot at itself. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to sacrifice myself and shoot myself in the dead light, you <laughs> sick fucking kids. Who taught you that? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, then he's just trying to raise them right now. <laughs> Honestly, oh, I was alive when there wasn't even laws in this country. <laughs> this is crazy. Maybe I've gone too far. How about I, I read you a story? Maybe <laughs> I'll help you with your algebra. I know math. You know, you know, we're talking about this thing that's not in the movie we're talking about, and thank God it's not. Yeah. I mean, how about a group hug? The, actually, at the end of the one sequence, I mean, there is they, there's a big hug. Sure. Everybody gets in a circle, and we have a big hug. Nobody's jerking nothing <laughs> in the circle. It's just a hug circle. Mm -hmm. This is one of the few moments where the movie improves on the source material, I would say. <laughs> yeah, you fucking better believe it. <laughs> so, so when they're kids, by the way, what, how do they, they, they defeat? Uh, Pennywise by spraying him with battery acid? How well, do they know to do that? I Well, here's the thing. I, I thought the same thing because I watched it and I, I didn't read the book, but while yeah. I was wikipedia today, they used the power of imagination against Pennywise. Oh, So the kid, by saying it's battery acid. acid, he reacts as if it is oh, right. man. battery acid. I thought it was like, um, I thought pollution killed all the monsters <laughs> in the world. Like, <laughs> Like you don't see Mothman anymore because uh, well, no, pollution, dude, coal country. pollution makes monsters. Whoa. man. that's what happened to Godzilla. That's true. And, and the toxic event. Well, yeah. and the toxic Avenger. I think of course. this is a monster paradox mm -hmm. that it's they can be killed <laughs> by or become from. Right. Oh, it's like the Genesis device. That's you know what? Yeah, totally. <laughs> So, yeah, and then, like, yeah, he, he goes away. They all hug, and then they go back, and they come back. And when they come back, he starts haunting them all. Um, Harry Dean Anson's, and, uh, Harry Anderson's. You just want to watch <laughs> MacGyver, I man. I kind of do. Uh, he, he goes to uh, the library to meet Mike. And this is my favorite Tim Currying that happens in the movie. <laughs> Where like he's like making fun of him. He's like, oh, she, he's like flirting with a young librarian. He's like, a little young for you, huh, Richie? And he's like, no, no. And then like he's trying to talk to her, and he's like getting all scared. There's a bunch of blood balloons going off, and then it's just this shot of like Richard Anderson in the foreground trying to talk to this librarian. Like, well, Harry what, what? Anderson. The <laughs> man's name is Harry Anderson. The character's name's Richie. Okay. All right. His so, name's uh, John Anderson. <laughs> or you Mr. Call Anderson. <laughs> Harry Anderson is in the foreground, and uh, Pennywise, the, Tim Curry is in the background, like, up on this balcony. He's like, hey, you fuck! And he's just, like, <laughs> screaming, and he's trying to just, like, well, when's he going to be back? Is he going to be back anytime soon? He's like, yeah, you're going to die, you son of a bitch! And he's just like, yeah, I, uh, uh, um, yeah thank you so much. I can, uh, it's just like the, ba it is a great scene. All while Harry Anderson, who's the only one that can see this is himself <laughs> covered in blood <laughs> yes exactly uh <laughs> it's awesome and then o'toole goes back to her house because she's trying to find her dad there she had this thing where there's a blood sink and she's like oh i guess i'll go back to see what the old sink looks like <laughs> man blood sink that's like a c-grade 80s horror <laughs> movie <laughs> yes don't wash your hands in blood sink. Ooh, the 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 prequel to Deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> the and bed that eats, man. And the prequel to uh, what? The refrigerator. Mm. <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. That one is bad. Murder phone. Oh, you're thinking heard. of um, murder by phone. Murder by phone, aka yes. Bells, I think. Oh, that's that's a, a that's a crazy movie. Yeah, the phone. You get a phone call and your head explodes. Basically, oh, really? Yeah. I have to see. I haven't seen. It's this. pretty good. Is you know, that's good? that's a situation where if you get a phone call, you might want to kill yourself. Not yeah. so much if a friend <laughs> invites you out out to Maine. <laughs> yeah, who's that in that movie? Of Richard Chamberlain? I want to say. Really, Harry Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> So she goes to this house, um, and this old lady answers the door, and she's like, hey, is my dad here? And she's like, FYI, your dad's been dead for five years. Thanks yeah. for checking in. Yeah, what? if you've got an abusive dad, that guy's going to die alone, and you're not going to that funeral. Good yep, for him. Totally. Uh, so she invites uh, her in for some tea, and she's like, oh, I love what you've done with the house, blah, 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 blah. And as is the case with several scenes in this movie, it's Pennywise pretending to be a person. Mm -hmm. uh, but they so take five minutes to get there yeah 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 well you know they decided they were going to make this a two-part fucking tv event man you got to so drag it out somehow well, eric has a new up. metric for uh we hate movies movies now because this is the longest oh, right. movie we've ever done because this is three hours and what was it seven minutes seven minutes so what in um, total it, the Godfather is what now? It's longer than the Godfather. It's longer it's two than the hours Godfather. and fifty eight minutes. Yeah, we, we have to we have to skip Star Wars now. It's, <laughs> it's just a hair under Schindler's List. It's eight <laughs> minutes short. It's eight minutes shorter than Schindler's List. <laughs> oh wow! 
That is insane. <laughs> For a that scary clown. Insane. And I'll tell you what, that other movie's got more kids dying in it. <laughs> oh, God. It's not good. I mean, no, it's a good movie, but it's not good what happened. Sure. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. I'm glad we could clarify that. Clean that up before the tweet storm. It's cleaned. <laughs> it's cleaned up. Uh, it's and a museum now. This is actually, I. it's kind of funny because it's another, like, Stephen King likes gross old dead ladies thing. Yeah, sure. Because uh, this is kind of just like The Shining where, you know, yeah. Jack Torrance sees the fucked up old lady. Did in the anyone bathroom. notice somewhere in this movie there was a poster in the background of, like, the glowing or yeah. something? Oh, yes. that's... Is that uh, a nod to The, the library. Shining? Is that a nod to The Shining? It is, is. yes. It's, it's that's bi- stupid. Because <laughs> Bill, Bill is a Stephen King type, and he oh, wrote a book oh, called he, The that, Glowing. Oh, he wrote The Glowing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's great. Well, that's it's a funny thing when Bill goes into the town library and there's a section that's like town hero Bill, and then <laughs> they have like all of his books laid out or whatever. Uh, yeah, but it's fucked up because then like so the old lady starts talking like Pennywise and uh. she looks up and she's got like fucked up Pennywise teeth, but then it turns into the voice of her father, and then it's it's that actor, yes, uh, who kind of looks like Harry Dean Stanton, then just dressed up with dead old lady makeup on, and he's running after her. Dude, it was fu- it, this is you a bone chilling part of this movie. Might be unrelated to Pennywise. This is just what <laughs> happened to her father. <laughs> he did some psycho shit. <laughs> It's a creepy town, man. Lots yeah. of creepy shit went on in this yeah. town, apparently. Well, this is also the town that the stand happens in. Okay, is Some, it, one of them? Is Insomnia is connected here? to this. Dreamcatcher's in here. What? Insomnia is connected to this. Insomnia is part of this because I think they talk about they talk about Mike working at the library. I think in Insomnia. So wait, okay. So in 1990, we finally <laughs> rid the town of uh, of it. Of Pennywise for hundreds of years, he's been, and then like fucking ten years later, Dreamcatcher shows up. Yeah, well, and then in Dreamcatcher, now in this, the clown has the powers, but in Dreamcatcher, basically the same group of kids has <laughs> yes superpowers. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. There's it's like other. There's like it. it's a why it. couldn't the psychic kids help out the kids who were fucking in the sewer? That's a good uh, point. Yeah. I guess they just weren't friends. Maybe they were the bullies. <laughs> well, yeah. I think they oh. skewed. I think the kids who were fucking in the sewer are a little older than the Dreamcatcher. Yeah, kids. so I guess it. And it was between it cycles in between thirty years. Oh, it right, because it's the thirty year thing. In the book, oh, it's twenty seven. Right. This is a stupid thing. Like in the book, it's twenty seven years uh-huh. is the cycle. Just keep that. Yeah, just whatever. fucking. Keep and that. and that. what is the alien cycle? Because in Dreamcatcher, right? Isn't aliens? Yeah, it's, so aliens it's like come thirty back. years. <laughs> Every, is an alien cycle. Yeah, it's, it's like the it's like the winter and the summer Olympics. It's always. <laughs> You have to keep it separated. The, the it comes every thirty years. The alien comes every twenty five. Uh, I'm and sure they never met me. You know, occasional ghost. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. A oh, ghost on fifteen years. Yeah, okay. Devil and dogs every like five minutes. Five <laughs> minutes dogs. maybe. No man, devil dogs. For me, that was like every afternoon. <laughs> have a devil dog on the way home from school, right? I was talking about the mighty Cujo, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the, what that nasty pastry. Yeah, oh, it's the that mass, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, like yeah, sand, yeah, yeah. but sand with like whipped cream. It was so yeah. dry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, devil dogs were notoriously dry no, cakes. It's trash, man. Uh, <laughs> Can we talk about the like the most awkward and like annoying scene in this movie? Please. Which is the endless dinner at the Chinese restaurant. Yes. Yes. So this was Ma- like a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> it really was, dude. So Mike, uh, with his town connections, uh, arranges to rent out like the back, the, the party room of this sit-down Chinese restaurant. Mm-hmm. First of all. As Eric pointed out off the air, you're not getting this fucking grand Hunan balcony type restaurant in fucking Maine suburbs. Also, I wouldn't want to go there. They're advertising chop suey. Isn't that more of like a West Coast thing? I never I never saw it on uh, living on the East Coast. Yeah, we don't have that here, really. Yeah, that's that's true. At least advertise like as it being like the selling point of the restaurant. Go right. for burgers and beer. Go for a fucking lobster roll. I'm finally back in Maine. You know, the right. one thing, I mean, the, the clown's terrible, but the lobster Lobster rolls are great. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be like clam chowder, maybe, probably. Yeah, go to, yeah, exactly. Go to like the Harbor District or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh, you're back. Come on. Come to the Harbor District. We've been building it up. Well, I don't know. Is Derry like We've on the coast? We've got a gap, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> is dairy on the coast like that? Is I don't, it, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know. I don't know where not, it's dude, positioned in the go state. Go to the dairy farm. Have <laughs> some cheese. It's a foodie destination. <laughs> so first oh, of all. Oh, you know, all those old factories have been turned into breweries. 
Sorry. <laughs> uh, kid's arms are a delicacy. <laughs> So the first problem sign at this restaurant right away is that there's a liquor cart that's just there for John Ritter to start poking around in, Mm, man. That's awesome. And so they get in and like immediately Mike is like, so this clown and they're like, hang on a second. Let's have a drink and catch up. And they proceed to just get loaded. Well, this is when we play the only song in the movie, which is because there's one. It, there, this is used in two montages: this montage and, and the, the, the bike bicycle montage. montage, where it's like, "It's all right, you paid for one song." <laughs> yeah, we only had one song. It's I don't know if it's him singing it, but I think it's a song that Curtis Mayfield wrote. Sure, awesome. Uh, yeah. Have a good time, cause it's all right. Yeah, over and over and over <laughs> again. And this movie does like it, it, all TV and movies does this, and it's this movie is about a fucking killer clown that shapeshifts into a crab spider. Sure, or you would think one of the most <laughs> unbelievable parts of this movie is the whole we're ordering seemingly endless amounts of Chinese food. Yes. We always do this in entertainment, television, and movies. Like, it's two people eating Chinese food. There's, like, nine takeout boxes yes. around. They are getting... That's how I eat Chinese food. Really? You just oh, order... I go, I go ape shit, dude. <laughs> and I then mean, I'm just is... like, you know what? Hey, maybe there'll be leftovers. There are maybe six of them. Be leftovers. There are six... But this is a restaurant. There are six of them at this table. They're getting... Like at least fifteen entrees we see during this Motown at least, montage. At least family six specials, style. specials. I would say not even uh, like the normal like yeah, chicken no, and broccoli. It's the real deal. Back of the fucking menu, whole fish special, <laughs> lobster sauce. There's that like a shit. there's like a suck like a succulent pig sitting on the table. <sighs> And it's you know, crazy. The fun, the fucked up thing is at the end of the thing, Mike insists on paying. Mike, notoriously the least successful of them all. Yep. Yeah. And like they do one cursory, like, ah, oh, come on, Mike. He's like, nope, nope, it's all taken care of. And they're like, well, all right, thank you, you Mike. You, and it's like, no, 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 Mike's in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there goes his rent. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it was a thing where like the owner of the Chinese restaurant had like a thousand dollars in late fees, and he's <laughs> like, all right, man, I will waive these late fees if you. You no. give me and my friends. Just that's why he's on probation. He's just fucking tearing up late fees left and or right. Or maybe he's got their kids hostage and he's going to feed them to it. Oh, that's I it. I bet oh, he's been like kids sacrificing kids around town. Oh, that might be something. We that should call be the these twist. Distractions. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the twist. He was like, it's helper. It's a great time. way to shut down. Like, if you want to pick up a check, uh, he has a great line, though, where he just goes, Sorry, guys. That's just the way it is. Uh huh. Shuts it right down. Like they make a stink, but well, you can't come back from that. If that's the way it is, that's the way it is. You know, if that's the case, and you're a millionaire architect, you mail Mike like five hundred bucks. You know, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's in an envelope, exactly. and like it's just like you don't Listen, think about the it. The rule of thumb is if you're on the cover of Time magazine, you're picking up the check. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely <laughs> correct. Thank you, Eric. Unless it's for a murder beef. That, yeah. you know, like that's, unless it's like your mugshot. Oh, yeah, that's I would like to, can we get a uh, murder beef for the table? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some of the sesame chicken. Oh, the murder uh, beef you have to order in advance. It takes way too long. Uh, to all make. right, Ted Kaczynski, just get out of jail. You're picking up the check, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know the rule. <laughs> Um, but so, uh, yeah, so they're, ha- they're all catching up. We learn a little bit about each other, everybody. And then it starts to get spooky scary, right? This yeah. is the in- important part. Well, this is so then the lady comes with like the fortune cookies mm-hmm. and they all like start turning into creepy monsters and stuff and gushing blood and guts all over the table. A cockroach. Someone gets lazy and confused. One's a cockroach, one's a scary eyeball, which is mm. a pretty good effect. Another one is like just blood because we like blood. This John Ritter's is like this weird crab claw <laughs> thing that is trying to get everybody. That one's weird. Yeah. And then uh, Mike's got like a fucking chicken embryo. Yeah. <laughs> That's also disgusting. Mm-hmm. But you know, the thing about this Sorry, scene- Mike, I ran out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought all six of you were going to show up. <laughs> I'm glad Stan's dead because I, I really don't know what I would do with that. Someone seven- would have just got a stale cookie. <laughs> Nothing creepier than a stale fortune cookie stand. I, 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 I but put my used floss in it. I mean, I, that's pretty and the, gross. The fortune was terrible. 
The fortune was just one of those obnoxious things that says, to get more fortunes, go to this website. <laughs> Fuck you, lazy Chinese I fortune cookie. I only had cookie. enough magic left to make the lucky numbers all 13. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got, Mike. Sorry. But, you know, by rules of, you know, restaurant etiquette, technically mm-hmm. this dinner shouldn't even happen. Uh-huh. Because they all get there, and then, like, Annette O'Toole is the last to show up. And mm. she walks in, and it's a fucking 1990 Annette O'Toole, and everybody knows what's going on. Uh-huh. And she takes one look at these dudes and then faints. Yes. You know what happens when someone faints at a restaurant? The dinner is over. Yes, exactly. We're Here all your going- coats. A doctor, or, you know, the EMTs are coming, and you're definitely not staying at that restaurant. No. This meal should not happen. I'm not feeding you food after that. No, get out of my restaurant, fucking fainting all over the place. Well, because they cut, like, you don't even see, like, her getting back up. It kind of, like, just cuts from yeah. her doing that to, like... They, they nurse her back to health with duck yeah. sauce. <laughs> she's <laughs> laying down. Oh, she's laying, because this is, it's a it's a classic TV, three-hour TV movie commercial break. Mm-hmm. She faints. We fade to commercial. We come back in. She opens her eyes. She's looking at Harry Anderson, and he's like, oh, hey there, beautiful. <laughs> and this is also when you, like, you really see Harry Anderson fucking open it up. He's really <sighs> taking it for a ride in this scene, and he's screaming in this restaurant. If I was any other diner at this establishment, I'm furious with the fucking management. Yep. I'm like, get back there and tell them to shut the fuck up. Everybody's screaming and fainting. That nerd had an asthma I, attack. And honestly, because I hadn't seen this before, I was certain he was gonna get eaten. You or like pray. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was like, come you on. Pray this, for it. This is setting it up. This is, I'm really going to get He's not the one that dies. And you're like, why is he not the one that dies? He's just endlessly bitching throughout this whole movie. We wind up going to a haunted hotel. Uh, <laughs> or not really a haunted hotel. A hotel. Um, Pennywise also is kind of like, ah, oh, shit. They, they all came back. You know, let me free the town murderer so hopefully he can murder one of them. And this was one of the bullies, right? Yes. From the past, because we kind of didn't yeah, talk hours. about the... Excuse, yeah, Bowers. Bowers. Oh, I thought you said hours ago, and I was like, yep, it sure was. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking long-ass movie. He was throwing... Well, no, he got rocks thrown at him. He was finally defeated. All yep. of his bullying was... And then apparently he went... Uh, to, not after a couple brisk uses of the N-word in this TV oh, movie. Holy a B C. It's it's <laughs> terrible. Were they bleeping that or what? I don't know. That's a great question. They definitely weren't. Yeah, you're right. It's 1990, were. man. Because they were making it for ABC, right? So it was just like, oh, it's, it's yeah, it's in there. That's so weird. I guess they wanted to show like the adversity. Uh, I mean, he's a face. he's a villain, so like I guess right. you get away with it. I'm using but air quotes. Everywhere. Like, but you know what, man? Do the math. He's a fucking black kid in 1960 Maine. Also, you didn't need the you didn't need to add salt. The guy was like uh, offering to cut people up and yes. like was going to rape <laughs> Bev at some point. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I didn't need this too. It's distracting. It's jarring. It takes you out of the movie. Sure. Because he's also, f- he's throwing boy around all over the yeah. place. That's uh. it. I get it from there. Exactly. <laughs> so they throw rocks at him and they run him out of the area. And apparently he ends up like confessing to uh, its crimes. Well, I be- think, well crimes. yeah, he goes, he goes crazy. He, him and his buddies go and they actually try and kill all the kids in, in the sewer. They're going to follow him or mm. maybe fuck him up. They might kill him. And then it gets them. Uh, and like kills two of his buddies and turns him into Jim Jarmusch real quick. You took my <laughs> joke, you fuck. <laughs> it's like Jim Jarmusch begins this kid. Oh, that's awesome. Oh yeah. man, it's so great. Yeah, one kid gets sucked into a pipe, and it's a great effect because like it's just the actor laying on his stomach with this his hands the out. Thing in the movie, yeah. And then like there's fake feet, so he's like bent yeah. unnaturally, which is awesome. Then another kid just gets torn up, and then that other dude gets Jarmushed. It's it's fucking great. So, so, now, so now we cut to Jarmish in prison, <laughs> yeah. and it is talking to him via the moon. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, whatever movie. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, he's just like and you then know he's under his bed. Yeah, it's like the whole thing. His idea, his thing is like, oh, you know, if 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 they don't believe in me, I can't get them. But in either case, if you get a knife, you can cut their goddamn throat. Like, you know, yeah, I right. can make knives. So yeah. I can Pen- make many, Pennywise, many knives. His face is in the moon telling this guy to uh, go out and kill. Kill more. more yeah, kids. yeah. Well, it's, a, it's this is now this is a weird now. it's a weird fucking thing. What happens here? So he's I believe he's in a, like a mental ward. Yes. And he's like, all right, how am I going to break out of here? 
So then Pennywise appears to him in the form of the buddy who got bent up in the tube. Yeah. Whose name is Belch. It's your great name. And, you know, it's like zombie looking Belch or whatever. And he's like, hey, here's this switchblade. And then there's a, the attendant or like the security guard comes in like, hey, what's going on in here? At which point Belch turns into a dog monster. <laughs> oh, he turns great. into a clown that with a dog it's head. Great. It's a clown with a dog head. It's great. It's like a Rottweiler in a clown costume. And like, so if it, if like this it car- creature's thing is like he taps into your fears, which it's very smart that he's mostly a clown because he was not terrified of clowns, sure. right? But then like Seth Green sees him as a werewolf, yeah. you know, we the fat kid sees him as the dad, whatever. Yeah. You know, blood sink, I guess, is what a net tool <laughs> Bev is yes. scared of, right? But like, so this You this, won't wash your hands <laughs> of blood sink. <laughs> this <laughs> medical attendant is scared of a clown with a dog. <laughs> like well, that's pretty scary. Like Pennywise is like, okay, what's this guy scared? Oh, it's well, it's my body with a dog head. <laughs> Roddy's. <laughs> Roddy's. <laughs> Easy okay. enough. And then the guy on the next cut's like, well, Mary, if you want, I'll, I'll throw a lasso around the moon and pull down Pennywise the Clown for you. By the way, but like you derail my thoughts so hard here because now I'm thinking about them like putting the Rottweiler oh, on absolutely. the ladder and oh, then yeah. draping the clown costume dude, over the it. The logistics <laughs> of getting this shot is no, it's dude, frustrating. Dude, that wasn't like that wasn't movie magic, man. That's this fucking real. Oh, There's wow. clown yeah, dogs out knows, there. Uh, Pennywise <laughs> made it for for the picture. There's clown dogs out there. That but, just reminds me of oh my god, what was that in uh, uh Don't tell mom the babysitter. Yes, guy. thank you, clown yes. dog. The uh, the restaurant and don't tell mom the babysitter. Oh guy. right. Uh, did uh, uh, did anybody uh, notice? Uh, it was it was the worst part of the whole movie for me. But, oh please! Um, wow. The name of the attendant. Oh yeah, Koontz. What? Koontz. Really? Yeah. Koontz. He had to. Oh, I hate. He's the worst yeah, one. Yeah, that's what he says. Oh, Koontz. He's the worst one. Wow. <laughs> he's. Not- <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get that fucking Koontz too. And then the kids are gonna fuck each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he's cleaning up after my characters. <laughs> oh, that's Lovecraft. He's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Clickety clack indeed, man. Um, so they go the back haunted, to oh the hotel oh the haunted hotel. We're in the haunted scenario. hotel, and then like everyone's like oh, uh, we're ha- telling stories, and then like it's like oh you know let's all go up to our rooms, and like somebody has the idea like don't go alone. So uh, John Ritter, Eddie, uh, and um, uh, Mike go up to their their respective rooms to get stuff. Uh, Ritter goes into an Edo Tools room to get her a sweater, and he's like smelling all of her stuff. By the way, yeah, it's a it's it's a have a good smell Costanza uh, situation. Perv's holiday, man. <laughs> he's just, and um, he <laughs> and like he had written her some poem as a kid, and she comes in. And she's like, oh, you wrote me this poem. I remember it. And they start making out, and wouldn't you know it? Very much like The Shining, she, he turns into Pennywise. Yeah, Did she, you kiss me, fat boy, which is a pretty funny line. I chuckle yeah. literally every time <laughs> I've heard that mm-hmm. and will if I ever hear it again. Literally. Kiss me, fat. And it's like the way they capture like Tim Curry doing it too, like the angle that he's at. It's just, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think I'm going to make that. I, I haven't made up posters or anything like, or, you know, uh, I don't have excuse dec- me. No, I don't have decorations for my wedding yet, but "Kiss Me, Fat Boy" might work. Oh yeah, totally. it sure would. <laughs> <laughs> you should decorate your wedding with a bunch of fucking horrific looking clowns. That's going to be her T-shirt. Yeah, the kiss me that's fat what boy. she kiss, wears. Yeah, "Kiss Me, Fat Boy." <laughs> no, uh, and then he he runs out screaming. Um, Kuntz gets Mike, and he, he he we get one more classic use of the N word real quick. Yeah, yep. you know, just for old times' sake. <laughs> you want to connect them? This guy's been in prison for oh, forty years. So that's fr- who he is. <laughs> the first word he says as a free man is that he's yeah, a Red well, Sox fan, all right. <laughs> Mike's just like, oh yeah, oh hey, what's going on? <laughs> and to to which he responds by stabbing him in the chest a couple of times, and then like everybody gets him off there. Yeah, they want up killing him. Yeah, he somehow gets the knife in him, dies instantly. So they leave. They they they're like, oh, we have to rush Mike to the hospital. Oh my God, Pennywise is everywhere, and they're like they're running out of the hotel. 
and they're like, what do we do with the dead body? It's like, if we get the police, I know the town's crooked. We're going to be screwed anyway. So, jo- But John Ritter leaves his card on the way out. He's like, oh, just charge my, charge my room. Oh, yeah. With the dead body? Look, that, that's when you're paying There's cash. There's going to be a very different John Ritter Time magazine cover <laughs> in like about a month. Don't rent a room to this man. <laughs> well, it's fucked up because he has... I think it's Ritter's character that says this too. He very easily comes up with just put this blanket over him, turn the TV on really loud, and we're just going to leave. I was like, that was a pretty fluid thought. Mm -hmm. I've been here before. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) When they take, uh, 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 what's his name, to the hospital? Uh, Mike. Mike Mike to the hospital. So they all, because they don't want to leave each other. Yes. And Harry Anderson has rented this red convertible, right? And they all cram into this car. Harry Anderson is definitely driving drunk to this hospital. Yes. They've been doing nothing but pounding whiskey this entire... Back since the Chinese restaurant. I I would argue they have to fight it drunk. (laughs) They definitely are still drunk, dude. That'd be great if they're getting into the... As they're going down to the sewer, they're like, I'm kind of getting that like pre-waking up hangover you get. Yep. Oh, I hate that. Man, the good thing about a, being down in the sewers, you could just puke wherever. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But man, like you want to be on your A game when you're fighting a menacing fucking monster, man. I don't want to do anything when I'm hungover. This is not the time for me to be believing in something. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, shit. That thing's played by Tim Curry. Oh, God. Oh. Use my imagination now. <laughs> I imagine a big bed <laughs> in an air-conditioned room watching oh, The Rock on VHS. <laughs> That's Penny- how Pennywise gets him. Yeah, it's becomes- a big Serta mattress coming he- he out. He becomes deathbed, dude. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, I'd love yeah. that. Um, uh, Audra blows into town for no reason. Like she's not a character. Oh, she, Bill's wife, yeah. played by Olivia Hussey. She might as well like just not be in the rest of the movie, like because it doesn't. She doesn't do anything. Maybe in the book, and who yeah, knows? no, it's it's useless. Honestly, yes. she comes in. She gets caught by Pennywise immediately. He uses her his deadlights, which, in case you don't know, is uh, a light that makes you go insane. It comes from his tummy. What? <laughs> he's like an evil care bear <laughs> he kind of is God. i don't understand this thing too with audra so like her motivation to go so like they live in england yeah. right um it's they're very, working on some movie it's or a something. very stanley kubrick situation yes. right so they live on this like big estate they're in england. faking the moon landing um <laughs> <laughs> yep. and so she's talking i to need this bill dude. to help me with this moon landing you can tell that she definitely has a type because she's talking to this dude who's either like the producer of this movie oh. or the director who's oh. like another evil shithead dude to franco. this movie franco is franco his name? the producer uh-huh this guy also has a ponytail Ugh. and and alludes to they had some sort of previous relationship oh shit this lady likes dudes with scuzzy ponytails but as whereas bill is like uh the pure you know innocent heroic ponytail Mm -hmm. this franco's the dirty evil ponytail bad boy that's because franco wears ties (laughs) what do you think bill's wearing ties all over this movie oh dude he's wearing a tie through this whole movie oh i did he wears a tie with a lot of inappropriate shirts freaking blank nothing this he looks like Like, a really hip substitute teacher yeah he's wearing like a tie with like a purple corduroy Roy shirt. It's Holy just moly. weird. It's just Is unsettling. It, yeah, it's like you cut up a blanket and put a tie around yeah. it. <laughs> all right, all right. He's wearing good ties. <laughs> yes. But so he's like, you know, this dude's like, if you leave, like, you know, you're, I guess she's also starring in the movies, the idea. Yeah, sure. So he's like, well, his career is already over with. If you leave, you're going to wash yourself up just like him, blah, blah, blah. And she just immediately, like, she, it's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on here. She picks up the phone. She dials literally three numbers. Uh-huh. You can see her just go bop, bop, bop. And she's like, hello, yes. When's your next flight to America? I was like, that's a fake phone call. You're just trying to get out of talking with Franco. That's something that Stan could have figured out. Oh, hold on, Mike. I've got someone on the other line. Click. Yep. <laughs> that's it. And what? I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> exactly. And also, Bill was working on a movie. That's a perfect excuse to get out of fucking main duty for the weekend. I think he pulls the biggest guilt trip on him, though, because he's like, hey, man, it's back. By the way, you know how I know? I found a fucking photograph of your dead brother. Oh, God. How many times are you going to use that one? Mike? Seriously, pulling the Georgie <laughs> yeah. card on me, you fucking dick. How many of those do you have? <laughs> no, like, honestly. <laughs> 
I don't understand that though. Why is it leaving fucking headshots of these kids? <laughs> that's a great question. Because that's that's like the opening scene of the movie. Is like a little girl gets killed and Mike shows up at the crime scene and this cop is like, you know, the chief is gonna be mad if he knows I let you on the crime scene. And then the chief comes and chews this dude out. Yeah. And Mike looks under this tree and it's just a picture of this kid. What yeah, are you doing? I, I, yeah, you yeah, know. I mean, it, and also like he doesn't want the loser club. Uh, which is what they call themselves to come back, right. like that specifically. Like he doesn't want that to happen, so don't leave headshots of the loser club's brother. Maybe this is like you know, suicide by loser club. Like he <laughs> oh, knows, man. like that's how I want to die. Oh, no, no, <laughs> he no, knows, no. Like, they're gonna end me. Leno's ratings were down for a little bit, <laughs> so he, he had to get like a one, like he really had to pull in a favor. So those fuckers are still alive. Pennywise, you gotta help me out. Letterman's kicking my ass. <laughs> You gotta kill more kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, also Pennywise, just cut Mike Hanlon's break line, dude. That's it. Yep. That's, that's it. it. That's the end. That's the oh, end. Oh man, it'd be great if like Pennywise just started resorting to like regular crimes. <laughs> yes. Like his powers fading in the world. Maybe the earth's getting too old or something. Sure. So now he's just like cutting breaks and like pushing people in front of the crosswalks <laughs> when they shouldn't be. And he's like he's like fucking with their tax returns, so they're oh, un yep. unknowingly mm -hmm. committing tax fraud. Exactly. He's like, now Mike is stealing cable. <laughs> <laughs> Shaves off the wig, now gets just a black trench coat. One well placed phone call to tell. I'm Warner. <laughs> it's 20 years in the clink, Mike. <laughs> so uh, um, at this point, Ritter and Annette O'Toole start making out outside of the hospital. And like, uh, uh, Ritter's got this great line. He's like, I don't know, Bev. Is it you or is it the clown? And I'm like, you kind of can't come back from that, Bev. You have to explain uh, to her that just a few minutes prior to Mike's attempted murder, yeah. Uh, he was making out with Pennywise and thought it was her because without that information, he's just like, "Is it you or is it the clown?" And you're, like, she would be offended. No, but not only that, but dude, how are you getting? How are you ever going to be comfortable with this woman if every time you look at her, you think about the clown that hard? You know what, that dude? It's it's the power of a 1990 Annette tool. Okay, that's true. I, I don't know. I don't. I think you say goodbye to erections. After <laughs> yes, this. Exactly. I think this is just you know what. Turn your back on it. Maybe I mean a couple of years you got Viagra. And then yeah. you're okay, but like, <laughs> but like for it. the time being, I'm gonna spoil your erections forever. <laughs> so what happens now? They head to his bone cave. Yeah, they kind of like <laughs> they after some much uh, annoying Harry Anderson bitching. It's like, uh, oh, I didn't want to come oh. here. Now I didn't want to go to dinner. Now I didn't want to go to the fucking sewer system. Yeah. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna fucking kvetch about it the entire time. Well, that's, I mean, even that I would almost take over fucking Bill like very mopishly blank screen saying we have to do it guys because they're all about to leave and yeah, say fuck yeah. you to all this and he's like no we have to do it because we have to do it for Georgie which I, yeah it's lame but it also like mirrors in the kid timeline yes. where it's this, he Jonathan Brandis who I, is good in this movie by the way yeah, he is. Uh, is like very upset and he's like please help me he's like begging for their help oh, oh my god what, oh, go ahead I'm um, no, sorry no what if a 1960 Jonathan Brandis to beat Pennywise imagines his hero, Chuck Norris? <laughs> oh, I like this a lot. This? I like this. This I like. <laughs> <laughs> because that's that, that's in his he's he's the greatest power of them all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, clown. <laughs> yeah. Hey, clown. There's nothing more un-American than a killer clown. <laughs> Maybe voting Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, clown, did you also serve in Vietnam? I didn't think so. Kia. <laughs> Kia, indeed. <laughs> so we go down in the sewer. Harry Anderson's like, nobody brought a machine gun? Gr gr good point, though, honestly. Like, what are you talking about? It's a fucking magic clown, man. A machine <laughs> gun's not going to do anything. That's a good point. It's a stupid line. Well, or from you a just, stupid character. Or just imagine a gun yeah. and blow it away. <laughs> right. If like, anything's going to work. Gun if, with battery acid bullets? Yeah, whatever. Oh, shit. Who gives a fuck? Maybe imagine dragons? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so we go down there. It's just the five of them at this point because Mike's laid up. Mike survives the stabbing. He's in the hospital. Stanley <laughs> killed himself for no reason. Absolutely no reason. Yeah. And so it's it's actually a really dumb thing is Mike gives uh, Bill the two little like silver nuggets that Bev used as a kid to slingshot 
it or whatever. Yes. So he's like, because so, Mike went through the garbage to get it. Right. He went. He went back down in the sewer on his own to get them, uh, which he admits to Bill was because uh, you uh, living down here, Mike. <laughs> He hey, hey buddy, you can't be sleeping down here, man. <laughs> it was during a rough patch of his life, and he was feeling suicidal. So he's yeah. down there like... Suicide by clown. He's like, yeah, dude. He's like, all right, either I find these two little melted down silver nuggets, or I get killed by the clown. One or the other. Or gas exposure, or like, you know, any anything. Oh, yeah, just poisoned by feces. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. even if you're not poisoned, like the smell is sticking to yeah. you for months. Oh, you can't wash no that. No shower off. What, can do any help. Hey, Mike, you <laughs> sleeping it off in there or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, no, what man. Bill says is like, it's the five of us, but we have these two nuggets one's for Mike and one's for Stan, so we're all here. I was like, no, there's five of you and two pieces of garbage. <laughs> So whatever they go down there, there's a bunch of creepy like people wrapped up in like spider web shit, including Audra. Yeah, and uh, Georgie comes back. The boat comes back. Uh, we just fight this fuck. It's a it's a big stupid spider crab which, thing. Uh, it looks I terrible. Very anticlimactic. Like, give me Tim Curry. You know what? Maybe if you want to put him in a different outfit than yes. the clown, put him in the fine. outfit from the book. Like in the book, he's a clown, but he's wearing like a crazy like silver suit. Uh, any anything i yeah. agree with you like just to have this big just puppet clown like reptilian or something mm-hmm. you know it's i mean to go back to like 1989 when they're making this movie and be like oh i'm sorry wait so what's going you have this amazing performance from tim curry and he's not in the last 15 minutes no, no, of no. the film instead we're going to kick a puppet <laughs> yeah and that's <laughs> that's by, what we do we kick by the a way, puppet that is to death. it that there is no other way to put it it is just <laughs> they they go up all this fear they've had. Yes. Yep. And they push it like a swing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's over. That's it's, fucking it. Well, it's kind of just like the it's they're Joe Pesciing this thing. They're beating yeah. the shit out of it. They, they really are. A lot of mafia kicks. Yeah, mm-hmm. They get a nugget in the thorax, and that's that. <laughs> Dominic! <laughs> that my brother in there. Yeah, I mean, like, he tries to use the deadlights, it doesn't work. Well, he, does it does she get a shot off on the deadlights or no? She does, because he's I, I think he's he's showing them his stuff. <sighs> Either because he's trying to scare them, or if that's part of his mating thing, I don't know how it works. And like then, that's how he's aroused. It might be suicide by the loser club. <laughs> no, that's it. Do it. <laughs> Leno is terrible. Take my life. If I see one more jaywalking, I'm gonna do it myself. Actually, that'd be perfect. They green screen it, and like it's a fire. When she hits it, there's like a firework goes off. Or yeah, something. that also it looks should very just be dumb. Jay Leno's face. <laughs> All right, or like, hey, how's it going? What was that one character you used to do, like Biondo or something? It's just his floating head. Have Jay Leno's floating head come out of his belly. <laughs> hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about the uh, the these people in uh, Arkansas? <laughs> and so it like they they they, 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 uh, they put this in the newspaper. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, look at this! They were uh, trying to take an ad for something and they spelled something wrong. This is television comedy. Send me to eternal darkness <laughs> now, please. I've lived a million years and I want it to end. Uh, so the the nerd kid gets picked up and I guess has like his skeleton crushed by this monster which i need a little bit more here i need yeah. blood out of his eyeballs or something, something. anything and yeah. he just kind of like expires and then a netto tool shoots the deadlights and it kind of rolls over and they're like oh you know this isn't over and harry anderson actually has a good line right here he's like i don't want to have to do this again when i'm 70 which yeah. was pretty funny and then he's like they decide like all right let's finish this once and for all and like chris said they kick over this puppet <laughs> and they're all just i mean it's like yeah. It's like a fucking Romero movie, man. Like, they're tearing at this thing, which, by the way, he was supposed to originally direct this. Better movie. They're, like, pulling at this thing, and my God in heaven, (laughs) this dude who plays Bill reaches, (laughs) and they're all, like, they're all, like, screaming. Like, John Ritter's just got, like, goop all over his face, and this dude rips out this beast's heart and just tears it in half. Nice. They should eat it. They should have they to should eat, eat it. it. Consume it. Yeah, make it become part of us. Mm-hmm. So th- this is this is all we had to do. <laughs> yeah, it this seems- is really after all that. Yeah. Yeah. All you had to do was uh, rip a space spider's heart in half. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the end. Of, what centuries now of yep. m- of child massacres. I mean, but they're they're the ones that cracked it, though, dude. I guess is they, the they idea. had the bravery and the tenacity, oh, of course, and the previously unseen orgy experience <laughs> yes. to take down this well, monster. Also, and the thing that didn't get put in is they also had the guidance of a turtle. 
Oh, right. Yeah, there's um, in the book, there's a turtle that helps them around. The creator of the universe mm-hmm. is a turtle, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Clickety coke. Well, Clickety coke. <laughs> Clickety coke. That's an actual religious thing, I think. Uh, it's some, uh, someone believes that. Japanese, maybe? Or maybe Native American? Madonna? Americans, or? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That sounds like a Madonna. <laughs> Probably Madonna. Uh, but the, the funniest thing is, my favorite piece of IMDb trivia ever is John Ritter went up to the producer and he's like, oh, uh. So when uh, what's a turtle gonna look like? And the guy was like, "The fuck are you talking about, <laughs> <laughs> turtle?" <laughs> that was oh man, that's, that's well, humiliating. There's four fortune. of them, and they're named after <laughs> Renaissance painters. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that's a bummer though. If you're Ritter and you're maybe like a fan of he, it, no, he was actually a huge fan apparently. And you know, he go, it's like, hey, one of my favorite parts of this movie is the turtle god, and they're like. Fuck you, comedian. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're t- this is the Andy Dufresne murder scene. What are you talking about? <laughs> Why don't you fall over a table, you fuck? <laughs> oh, man, you fucking stole my tripper joke. That's oh, it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so this thing's dead. They carry that dead nerd out. Audra is comatose. Yes. And so what kicks in every uh, now and again in this movie, whenever it's convenient for him, <sighs> if he has the time to do it, Mike is technically narrating this movie. Sure. And he's writing down all these memories in his journal because he's the memories are, like, everything's getting cloudy again. They're forgetting that this whole experience ever happened. Good and idea. He, yeah. And he gives, like, the epilogue. So it's mm-hmm. Harry Anderson moves back to L.A. and he, sh- he makes a movie alongside somebody that looks like dead. Ed Eddie. That's a weird detail. Yeah, it is. I never really noticed that one before. Like this, this, this viewing round, I was like, oh wait, he said he looks like the dead friend. So is it Tommy Boy? Because the guy kind of looks like David Spade. (laughs) 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 So he does that. Uh, John Ritter and Annette O'Toole like leave town that day, and he says like they were married a week later, and three weeks after that they were pregnant. Okay. Well, because that that broke the curse. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, because they're all childless. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, you're (laughs) fine. You know what? You're fucking fine. (laughs) Thank you, Pennywise. You're welcome. (laughs) No, just tell tell her you met Pennywise. Nothing's gonna happen. (laughs) Uh, And then he's like, oh, so Bill and Audra are still in town because she's in a coma, or she's comatose. Yes. She, you know... And they're getting ready to leave, and they call this cab out, and Bill sees, like, his old bike, and he's like, oh, let me try this one thing. (sighs) And they get on a bike and ride down this, like, San Francisco hill. Yeah, in in Maine. (laughs) And, And she wakes up from this coma while he's, like, darting through traffic on this bicycle. And that's the last shot of the movie. Well, actually, no, the last shot of the movie is... Pennywise laughing for no reason. Not a shot, but as you hear over it the fades sound. to black, and it's like a clear television credits thing. Yeah, you know, it's like the end of an episode of Taxi, mm-hmm. and then like <laughs> it's just Tim Curry laughing, and you're like, oh yeah, that fucking great performance that I haven't seen in twenty minutes. Yep, so stupid, so fucking stupid. So, so is Mike gonna like publish this thing? Is oh. that is is that his Ooh. hope? Because I mean. Him and Bill might be getting themselves into a nice little lawsuit fight soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he changed the names to protect the innocent. I think. <laughs> no, Kevin's saying he might also write a horror story. Oh, about yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. The script, the rights. I mean, it's a whole thing. Well, wow. they're all forgetting it, though. And I think I don't know. It, 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 it's totally different. It's, I have that and you have it. So that's, that's, yeah. Oh no, that's coming for us <laughs> Look out for that Man, that's the fucking sci-fi channel ripoff If I ever heard it Oh no, that oh, yeah, Starring he's, Ian Ziering He's a mime He's a mime <laughs> Ian Ziering is the mime in that <laughs> uh, That starring Ian Ziering and Tara Reid Mm-hmm. Can I say I think I know why you watched this movie? You've you've said for quite some time now that uh, an instant A plus in any movie is child death. Yeah, this is like the child death all stars. This is like ev- I mean, so much child death. Yeah, I, even though it's all off screen. Yeah, I gotta see it, man. <laughs> I gotta see it. <laughs> Maybe you see it in this new movie. Man. Yeah, I want to. Uh, I want to sure. see like the soul leave the eyes. You know what I mean? <laughs> What, like it's a Gus Van Sant movie? <laughs> yes. Sure. Or real life, Chris. <laughs> would um would anybody recommend this it? No. And I I, I mean I don't know. I, again, we, we we haven't seen the movie that's out already. I will wind up seeing that. I'll let you know. I'll let everybody know it. <laughs> yeah, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's just sort of it's really boring. It's really long. 
Just there's got to be a Tim Curry supercut on YouTube. Just go watch. That's yes. what I was gonna say. I'm sure you can just track down everything because I think like all told, he's got like 15 minutes of screen time, something like that. I mean, even just the library scene would be good enough. <laughs> Him point. screaming in that library yeah, is great. Never see this. Yeah, Absolutely I, <laughs> never, ever see this. It's, it's just too long. That's it's my, too long. Yeah, that's my big beef with this. So, hey, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's on the, the lower end of the even the TV adaptations, because uh, I, I think the Shining adaptation I, is better than this. I will take Sleepwalkers over this any day that of the week. That I've never seen, actually. Any day of the Wait, week. Wait, that was a TV movie? No, like, what, but like just like bad In movies. In terms of I bad, mean, adaptations, bad yeah. adaptations. It's a oh, really I silly, stupid movie. It was a, oh, 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 a clickety-clack oh, oh. adaptation. I do believe so. <laughs> I don't think we're done with Stephen King TV stuff. I feel like the Langoliers... Langoliers is definitely an episode. Speaking of fucking Balky Bartakamoos, mm-hmm. he's all over that episode. And the Tommy Knockers is the other one? Yeah. Tommy Knockers was a TV movie. Movie. Uh, Tommy Boy was written by Stephen King. Uh, the, the Dark Tower, maybe. <laughs> oh, I heard yeah. bad things. It's supposed to I be heard awful. Bad things. I mean, listen, you have like this entire L O T R esque world you're setting up. Your movie is 99 minutes. Mm, I don't know. I don't that even sounds think like the best part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. If you want more WHM, check out whmpodcast.com or find us over on the HeadGum Network. Uh, rate and review the show wherever you get it. We'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We're at WHM Podcast. All that good social media stuff. Uh, coming up next week on the program, uh, as season eight uh, still gets underway here. We are doing sort of our... I guess this kind of counts as back to school, too, because kids die. But <laughs> sure. we're doing kind of our little back to school episode with If Looks Could Kill. Oh, and now what oh Now boy. what the hell is that? It's James Bond Jr. if it was a film <laughs> starring, uh-huh. what was his name, Richard Gre- Grieco? Richard Grieco. I think and it's going to be a hard recommend for everybody. I, I, I guarantee it. I kind it. of <laughs> really liked it. Isn't the Who's Roger Daltrey in that as yes, well? Yes, he is. Oh, man. For a second. I'm so excited. Andrew, himself. I'm very curious to see what you're going to think of this because I think, yeah, I think it's up your alley. I'm, I'm an if looks could kill virgin <laughs> right now anyway. But then me and a bunch of friends are going to go down in the sewer and fix that. <laughs> oh, so that's until you're going to get out of that sewer, my friend. <laughs> that's right, man. So until next week with uh, if looks could kill, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Gavin. Eric Siska. Take it easy. a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>